Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Now we're going to be installing the rocker rail and the rockers. First, let's talk about rocker shafts. If you have a rocker shaft, uh, whichever one you buy, and the second hole in on either side, the second hole in on either side, if one is larger than the other one, that has to go towards the rear of the engine because that is how the oil gets from the camshaft, comes up the cylinder head, and how it gets inside of the rocker rail to lube all the rockers. That's number one. Make sure you're putting that in the right spot. This one is uh, symmetrical. So it doesn't look like it matters. There's no indication. It doesn't say front or anything like that. So this one doesn't matter. Also, the oil holes at each lifter location. If you have a rocker rail that only has holes on one side, those holes go towards the bottom, not towards the top. They go towards the bottom because the lifter is being pushed up against the rocker rail and you want the lubrication to come out the bottom. So those are the two things you want to look out for. Once you decide that you're going to have it in place and, and it's in the right orientation, let's talk real quick about the, rock, the clamps for the rocker rail because there's something you need to know about those. And then we're going to install one section of lifters, set the end play, and then repeat that going for the rest of the rockers all the way down the cylinder head. First we look at one of the end clamps here and I have it set at zero and I have this clamp pulled all the way this direction. When you have the, the bolt loose, these clamps can move left and right and as you can see this one moves at least 40 thousands. If I can pull it and get it past zero but let's let's have it resting there and I can push this to the right and it moves 41 thousands. So this makes a big difference. That's why I always start at one end, start in the center and set your gap going all the way down or your your end play for all your lifters going all the way down because as long as you start at the same start point when you put the shims in you'll have uh, when you take it apart it's easy to start from the same spot. First we start with the adjustment nut all the way backed out so the the ball on the inside is flush with the lifter. And I then I start with the biggest spacer in the center without any shims. And I push them together, then I look at the valves to make sure that when I center as good as possible, center the roller on the, on the uh, spring or on the tip of the valve, that when they're together like this and they're centered, the tip of the valve and the roller, the roller favors the inside of the valve, which means it can move this way to the center and this is just slightly off center. And if they don't come off the, if the roller does not come off the valve, then you don't need any shims because this is as close together as they will ever get. Now, what I can do is push them all to one side and take a measurement. Now I simply measure how much total gap I have with my, my feeler gauges here. And I have, if I total these all up, um, 115 thousandths. Now 115 thousandths. Now each one of these rockers is supposed to have between 15 and 30 thousandths of uh, end play. 15 to 30 means you need 30 to 60 total. So let's shoot for an even number. Let's make it 40. So it's supposed to be 30 to 60. Let's go on the low end, we'll go for 40. And if I have 115, 115 minus 40 is 107, uh, I'm sorry, 75 thousandths. So I gotta make up 75 thousandths. Let's make it, let's make it 80, uh, enough, let's go down 70 thousandths because I want more. And each shim is 10 thousandths. So I want to make up 70 thousandths of gap here. And again, I'm going to put these centered as close as I can. And I will put together here 30 thousandths of shim. I got the 10 and 10 and the 20, and I can put these together, put 
push that that way. And look at the end of the valve here. And again, make sure the roller does not come off on the other side, which seems right. So I have 30 on this side. And if I have 30 on this side, that gives me 60. So if I go 20, 20 on this side does not push me, actually centers it pretty good. If I go 20 on this side, that centers it pretty good. So 10 and 10. So I want to be 60, so I'm going to put a 20 and a 10 in here. I'm going to push the rocker all the way over to that way. I'm going to look at the end and make sure the roller doesn't come over the edge of the valve tip. So it doesn't go too far. So if I, put, if I put 30 on this side and 30 on this side with nothing in the middle, no shims in the middle, I'll be sure to have this centered based on where these clamps are put on. So I'm going to put three shims on each side and we'll measure again. All right, I have three shims on each side. I have this clamp. I'm going to push this valve or I'm this rocker over so it's just just off. I'm going to move this uh, clamp here just so this rocker is slightly off the center to the right. I'm going to clamp it down. Then I will I have uh, 40 thousandths because I want to have 40 thousandths of total clearance. I'll put 40 thousandths in here. I'll push these together. See how much this clamp moves? This clamp moves quite a bit. So I'll push this here. I'll put my 40 thousandths of shim in. That's my total shim. Then I will lock this clamp in place. And now I have 15 thousandths. 20 thousandths of uh, shim, or 20 thousandths of end play for each one of the rockers, which is what you want. Then, after you're done with that, look underneath, look at the valve tips, and make sure that you don't come push it out one, one way. And make sure the, it doesn't, the roller doesn't come off the tip of the valve on one side, then push it all the other way, and make sure it doesn't go the other way, and make sure that it doesn't come off. And what you're trying to do is, you're trying to play with making sure that regardless of which way you push it, the ro uh, rocker does not, the roller here does not come off the tip of the valve. And this is where the time consuming part is because you may find out that if I push this this way, if I push this this way, this tip, this roller comes slightly off the tip, which means I want to actually push this that way. So I'm going to take one of these shims on the outside of this and put it on the inside over here. So this rocker right here doesn't go so far this direction. So I'm going to swap those. Also, notice that these uh, the locks where you put for the the push rods are, these are not in the center, they're offset. So make sure that you have the right offset for the right push rod hole or else you'll be taking it back apart. So that's my that's what I got to do right now. Swap one from here, put it in between this lifter, I'm sorry, from here between this rocker arm and the center bushing. All right, so I have the shim swapped. I got this clamp back in place. Put my 40 thousandths in here. And you can see I do have some play with this. This moves, that clamp moves. So I'll put my 40 thousandths shim in here, hold this, and I'll pull this clamp to make sure that it holds that in place. Clamp this down just to hold it and recheck. Make sure that when I push them both, both ways that the roller does not come off the tip of the valve. This one is good, the one on the right is good, and the one on the left is good. After I put the shim from this side to this side, now this one does not move off the tip of the valve. Just so you know what I'm talking about, if you see the roller on the tip of each valve, as I move this all the way to the right, neither one of them goes off the tip of the valve. If I move it all the way to the other way, neither one goes off the tip of the valve and if I center them based on the 20 thousandths of gap on each side, I'm sure that regardless of which way these rocker arms move as the engine's operating, 
The roller will never come off the tip of the valve for each one. This is a difficult part and this is why this job takes hours to do on an engine like this is because you have to make sure this anchor point stays the same. You get this set and with this clamp in place you have to duplicate the same process going all the way down for the rest of the valves and you have to take them off, put them on, take them off, put them on and it's going to take a good six hours to do the whole valve train but you have to do that to make sure these stay centered and you have enough play end play in these rocker arms. After you have it all shimmed and everything looks good you're going to take it apart one last time. You've probably already taken it apart 20 times. I've done it. Taken it apart, put it on, shim, move around. But you're going to take it apart one last time and you want to keep everything in order so just take it off very gently like that. And we have to start by lubing the ends of the valve tips. Then I'm going to put in each push rod, and each push rod I'll put some lube in the cup and a little lube on the ball where it goes into the lifter, and I'll put those all in. You can carefully lift and set it back in place. Most important thing, make sure all of your shims are inside the stands on the head because if you don't, this is possible. You catch one on there and you can bend up those shims pretty good. So be careful. There's a lot of shims in the pack, so you're not going to, if you ruin one, no big deal. But get them in there now. Go through it again. You got to tighten down the first clamp and set the gap on all of them going across, making sure the push rods are lined up with the balls on the rockers for the valves that are open. Always following the manufacturer's recommendation, it says to put some 30 weight oil on the bolt. One last little crank just to make sure it doesn't move. And check them all again to make sure that they are still centered on the valve's tips and they don't move off either side. Now I need to set the adjusters and rotate the engine looking inside to make sure the cam is on base circle now I'm going to turn this until until there's no play up and down right like that the manufacturer recommends an eighth of a turn. So an eighth of a turn, and I'll hold it there and lock down and do the rest. Last step, torque them all down to 40. Installing the rocker rail and rockers and shimming them to the center is a very slow and painstaking process. Just make sure you measure them every time you put them on to maintain the gap or the play, the end play for all the rockers as you put them on and you'll have no problem. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.